This is Chris Yada Hope Painter here on Paint Live TV. Today I'm going to be answering your questions that you left on my YouTube videos. If you want to interrogate me, just leave your questions down below after the videos and you just may find them live right here on my show. So stay tuned for this video. Okay, so here we go. We got Noah in the background. He's going to be asked the questions that you guys have posted on some of my videos. So here we go, Noah, ask the first one. All right, John Wharton says, I'm gonna be staining new brick. Should I power wash first? Very good question. So staining new brick. We typically, when it comes to brick, we stain brick when using a product called Agency Solid Color Stain or Semi-Transparent Stain. And new brick, it hasn't been out there, you know, and getting dust and dirt and, and all that kind of stuff. But new brick is kind of dusty and stuff. I would highly recommend power washing that new brick, letting it dry, and then applying your stain. So very good question. Keith Johnson asks about the Interfed roller. How do you expel the paint that is in the roller, handle, and hose when you're done painting? So that's another good question. So the Interfed roller, they're gonna have a lot of paint left in the roller. Take your five in one in the arc part of the five in one tool, you can scrape out the excess paint that's in the roller so that doesn't go to waste. Then I take and I pull that sleeve off. I'm gonna stick it onto a regular nine inch roller and I'm gonna clean it like I do a regular nine inch roller. And you can see some of my videos, how I go about cleaning rollers. Then you're just gonna take your your pump, it's hooked to an airless pump. You're gonna stick that in water and then I'm just gonna start feeding water through the interfed roller manifold part, just like I would um, an airless sprayer gun. So very simple and easy process to do and it's fast. Homer Corley asks, what do you think about ox hair brush for oil paint on wood trim? So ox hair brush, ox hair and, or natural bristles, they're actually designed specifically for oil-based paints to give a very good finish for oil-based paints. It's an excellent bristle, excellent for using oil-based paints. Do not use them for water-based paints as they'll, they'll soak up the water really fast and get too flim flimsy, but it's a great brush bristle to use for oil-based paints. CBS Professional Painters ask, can you use the Graco Ultra for oil and water-based paints? So it's a very good question. So Graco has multiple models when it comes to their handheld sprayers. So the Ultra is one that it comes with an attachment that you can use to ground the sprayer for using a specifically flammable based products. The one that's not the Ultra, you cannot use it for oil based products or flammable products. So very good question. So make sure if you're gonna be using lacquers, oils, or anything that's flammable to use the Graco Ultra handheld. Okay. Richard McCrell asks, how do you tape and caulk if you paint two coats? So this is a good question. So you don't want to, you know, if you're doing two coats, you don't want to put the caulking down and then begin working on your two coats because the caulking is going to dry before you get around to painting it. And then when you go to pull the tape, it's going to do what we call bridging and it's going to pull, it's going to um, dry from the wall to the tape. You're going to pull off the tape and it's going to peel it right off. So what we do is we do our first coat on the walls and we'll come to about, you know, like a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch from the tape on our first coat, then our second coat, that's when we'll apply our caulking, do our second coat, and then we'll take and do our cut ends and pull it while the caulking and the paint is wet. So Vic Dyson made the mistake of painting their driveway and after a year it's peeling. What's the best way to strip paint off and stain it? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, hopefully he didn't paint the driveway, but use maybe like some type of solid color stain or something. One of the reasons why it's peeling is it probably what didn't have a good enough profile profile. It wasn't etched good enough. So I use muratic acid to get a really good etch, but now that it's peeling off, a uh, simple and fast effective way is using a bead blaster and you can just go down and rent one of those from your local uh, rental store and they're very simple and easy to use and it's just the machine just goes right along and it just kind of throws down these beads down um, and just rapidly down onto the surface and it's going to etch and get that old coating off and it'll make the concrete look like just brand new. Chivas Lujano doesn't have a professional sprayer, 
but he's wondering if he can use a spray can from Home Depot to paint his shutters. That's a very good question. So, and, and typically what he's talking about is just the bomb cans and an airless sprayer loading up paint into an airless sprayer, you're gonna be able to spray if you got multiple shutters. If you just got one, it might not be that big of a deal, but say typically most houses are gonna have somewhere like 10 shutters and you're gonna be able to spray those shutters in probably about five minutes, five to 10 minutes. If you're using just bomb cans, you're gonna be out there spraying for hours with a bomb can. And then it's gonna get what we call flashing all over the shutter. It's just not gonna have that professional look and quality finish. Bomb cans are usually, they're made and manufactured for really small projects. And a shutter is gonna is what we what we would consider a very large project to do. And then the sh the paints in the bomb cans are oil based paints. They're not very flexible, and there could be some expansion and contraction on that plastic. And I've seen people that have done shutters in the past that they've actually peeled off. So the paints that we use on the shutters is the same as what we would put on the house, and it's a lot more flexible, a lot more durable, and it's gonna last longer. So Lion Barksley wants to know how you start to progress your employees from using masking to actually learning how to cut in. That's a very good question. So we always start our, our employees with we, what we call lights, numbers, and downspouts. And that also includes the masking and caulking process. And that's a good place for them to start. The down the line, one of the hardest things to do is to cut in a straight ceiling line. And after they've worked with us for a while, we like to just put a brush in their hand. And it does take years before we allow them to begin cutting in a ceiling line. But when they've worked with us for you know several years, we just put them on ceiling lines and we give them some few tips and tricks. Like you'll see, I've got, I think five videos or something like that with tips and tricks on doing cut-ins. And we'll just give them some tips and tricks and we just allow them to start cutting in. They're not gonna be perfect. They're not even gonna be close. And what I do is I just go back and fix what they've done. And then I give them some more pointers and it's just time behind the brush. It takes years and years and years to be able to cut in a good ceiling line. And we just allow the guys to learn by trial and error. In this video about painting brick, you mentioned that you don't like painting the brick white. So was that for just preference or is that resale related? So that's a good question. That video, that was um, a long time ago and so quite a while ago. And, uh, and it's weird because now there is this trend. People want to paint the brick and their stone on the outside and the inside of their houses white because it has that really crisp, clean look. When I made that video, I was absolutely just terrified of having to do this. I know it's, it's very labor intensive to paint brick and stone white, but after we did a few of them, I was absolutely amazed of how crisp and clean they look if they're done right. And I've actually done some of my own brick and stone in my own house now. I've painted it white, I absolutely love it. And so times have changed and so have trends and now I have a different opinion. If I had the opportunity to paint any brick or stone in my house, I would do it white. John Paul Patton wants to know whether the Titan Interfed Roller could be used to stain a deck. So it absolutely can, and it's gonna make staining a deck a whole lot faster if you've got a large deck. If it's a really small deck, then you know the setup process, the tear down process might not be beneficial, but when we're staining decks, you, we're hand rolling them, and then we're back brushing them to give them that nice, um, good professional look with a back brushed look. So the interfed roller can be used to get the stain on, but then I'd highly recommend back brushing it, and we use a deck boss, and we just screw it onto an extension pole and after it's rolled, we just back brush it with a deck boss. In this video about lacquer toner, Jonathan Murphy asks, is there an actual difference in a toner versus a glaze or just different terms for the same thing? And why did you go this route rather than a stain, uh, gel stain? Love the videos, learned a lot. So that's a good question. And there, there is a big difference between a lacquer toner, a glaze, and even a gel stain. And a lacquer toner is actually adding tint to lacquer itself, clear lacquer, and then you can just spray it right over the top of a lacquer coating, and it's gonna add color to the lacquer itself because the lacquer is in, the t is, or the tint is in the lacquer. So for instance, if you have um, some oak cabinets that weren't stained and they just have a clear coat over the top of them, you can put a lacquer 
um, toner or some tint into some clear lacquer spray it right over the top and it's going to color those cabinets now a glaze is something it's a oil-based product or um, it's typically an oil-based product and you just dip it in or you'll use a brush and you're going to wipe it onto your cabinets and then wipe off what you don't want that left over and then you've got a clear coat right over the top of that because a glaze is something that doesn't dry it's not a clear coat it's not a sealant and it's going to wipe off over time you can just take a rag and rub it off a gel stain a glaze dries really fast a gel stain you're gonna um, wipe it on or brush it on and it takes hours and hours for it to dry and it has just a different look than a glaze does so they're all three are different products used to achieve different looks and the final question the final one for the day uh, uh, fittingly this guy's username is the end the so. end cool um, I want go. to <laughs> I want to repaint my kitchen chairs with spray paint and they have a clear coat on them. Do I want to sand the clear cut clear coat off first? I mean, it's a good question. So anytime you do any type of painting, it is always best to do the prep, proper prep and creating a profile by sanding is going to give your product that you're top coating with more bite. It's going to last longer. It's going to less likely chip or come off so you really really should sand get a sander out um, just get like um, a three by four sander or a six inch circular sander the little three by four sanders are fast simple with the foam pads on them and you can sand it down create a profile really really fast but you really need to do that to do a um, proper top coat looks like uh, looks like we're all out of questions so uh, they better leave some more so we're all out of questions for today. If you want your question answered right here on Paint Live TV by Noah and I, all you gotta do is leave them down in the question or comment section right below. We love to hear what you have to say because you know what? I learn a lot from you just like you may learn a lot from me. So we thank you for your questions and comments. Leave them down below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. If you have, give me a thumbs up. Give Noah a thumbs up for answering or asking the questions. He did such a wonderful job. I thank you very much. I couldn't answer any of these no. questions. I don't <laughs> thank know. you very much. Um, hit the notification bell. Subscribe to the channel and then hit the notification bell. That way you get notified every time I come out with a new video. It's simple, easy to do. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Smash it, bang it, pound it. Whatever you do, just hit it. Click it. Out. Very good questions. So that's another good question. So it's a very good question. So those are good questions. Yeah, that's an interesting question. That's a very good question. That's a very good question. So that's a good question. So that's a good question. I mean, it's a good question. So